Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today in Human Health and Diseases Part 7, we are going to talk about the immunodeficiency diseases like AIDS and autoimmune diseases. Immunodeficiency results from the failure of one or more components of the immune system. Primary immune deficiencies are caused by genetic developmental defects, whereas secondary immune deficiencies arise due to various reasons like radiation, use of cytolytic and immunosuppressive drugs and infections. Here you can see the differences and classification of immunodeficiencies. Primary immunodeficiency is basically because of hereditary factors, whereas secondary immunodeficiency is because of acquired factors. The different types of primary immunodeficiency diseases, predominant antibody defect, combined T and B cell defect, complement defect, phagocytic defect and diseases of the immune dysregulation. Secondary immunodeficiency may be because of systemic disorders like diabetes, HIV infection, undernutrition. Immunosuppressive immunodeficiency can occur because of cytotoxic chemotherapy, bone marrow transplant and radiation therapy and corticosteroids therapy, etc. Prolonged serious illnesses can also cause secondary immunodeficiency like critically ill patients and hospitalized patients. AIDS. AIDS is an acronym for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. It is the deficiency of the immune system acquired during the lifetime of an individual indicating it is not a congenital disease. AIDS is caused by immunodeficiency virus HIV. It selectively infects the helper T cells. The infected helper T cells will not stimulate antibody production by the B cells resulting in a loss of the natural defense against viral infection. On the basis of genetic characteristics and differences in the viral antigens, HIV is classified into two types. Type 1 called the HIV-1 and type 2 called the HIV-2. Now let us move on to the structure of HIV. The human immunodeficiency virus belongs to the genus lentivirus. When observed under the electron microscope, HIV is seen as a spherical virus, 100 to 120 nanometers in diameter, containing a dense core surrounded by a lipoprotein envelope. The envelope has glycoprotein GP spikes termed GP41 and GP120. At the core, there are two large single stranded RNA. Attached to the RNA are molecules of reverse transcriptase. It also contains enzymes like protease and ribonuclease. The core is covered by a capsid made of proteins. This is followed by another layer of matrix proteins. Here you can see the structure of the HIV. It has a two single stranded RNA in the center which has molecules of reverse transcriptase. Around that is the capsid protein and Outside, it is a layer of matrix protein. Outside that is the lipid bilayer, which has glycoproteins 41 spikes and GP120 spikes. HIV transmission. HIV is often located within the cells, especially in macrophages. HIV can survive for 1.5 days inside a cell, but only about 6 hours outside a cell. What are the roots of HIV transmission? Unsafe sexual contact blood contaminated needles, organ transplants, blood transfusion, vertical transmission from HIV infected mother to the child through the placenta. HIV is not transmitted by insects or by casual contact. Here you can see in the image the HIV and AIDS is transmitted through unprotected sex by drug addiction, blood transfusion, pregnancy from the mother to the child and non-sterile instruments. HIV or AIDS is not transmitted through touching, for example the handshake or through food or by kissing or by insect bites or through water in, by swimming in the pool. After getting into the body of the person, the virus enters into the macrophages where the RNA genome of the virus replicates to form the viral DNA with the help of the enzyme reverse transcriptase. This viral DNA gets incorporated into the DNA of the host cells and directs the infected cells to produce more viral particles. The macrophages continue to produce the virus and in this way acts like a HIV factory. Simultaneously, HIV enters into the helper T lymphocytes 
replicates and produces more progeny viruses. Here in this image you can see the virus in a macrophage. The virus directly infects through the receptors of the macrophage and enters into the macrophage. It causes replication. The release of the viral RNA helps in the multiplication formation of the DNA by reverse transcriptase. This reverse transcriptase enzyme which forms the DNA and the DNA gets incorporated into the host DNA in the nucleus. Number two, you can see the cell to cell transmission occurs with CD4 T cells. Number three, you can see that there is rapid viral multiplication by the formation of more viral RNAs and the viral particles which are released through the macrophages. Number four, you can see the phagocytosis of the infected CD4 cells occurs which are infected with the AIDS virus. Number five, you can see that the virus can have virus containing compartments which have large number of viral particles which can be released outside or can enter again into the macrophages. Number six, you can see the FC receptor complement mediated phagocytosis occurs by the macrophages. The progeny viruses released in the blood attack the other helper T cells. This is repeated leading to a progressive decrease in the number of helper T lymphocytes in the body of the infected person. Here in this image you can see that the HIV invades a T cell through the receptors that are present on the T cell and once it enters into the T cell it produces large number of copies of the virus inside the host and destroys or cause the lysis of the T cells and releases large number of other viral particles. Because of the decrease in the number of T cells, there is no stimulation of B cells or formation of antibodies. During this period of lysis of the T cells and release of large number of viral particles, the person suffers from bouts of fever, diarrhea and weight loss. Due to the decrease in the number of T lymphocytes, the person starts suffering from infections and becomes immune deficient and is unable to protect against any infection. Here in this image you can see the symptoms of AIDS. The lymph node swelling, headache and difficulty in concentrating, respiratory symptoms like dry cough, pneumonia, sore throat, the skin symptoms like rashes, fever and night sweats, the digestive system symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle pain and joint pains, nail symptoms like thickening and curving of the nails and there is weight loss, fatigue and loss of appetite. A simple blood test is available that can determine whether the person has been infected with HIV. The ELISA test enzyme linked immunosorbent assay detects the presence of HIV antibodies. It is a preliminary test. Here in this image you can see the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. On the left side, there is detection of antibodies to HIV. The immovable HIV specific proteins are used as bait, that is antigens, for HIV antibodies in the human blood sample. The HIV antibodies bind to the antigens and the bound HIV antibodies are made visible by labeled antigens that bind to the HIV antibodies. On the right side, you can see the detection of HIV specific proteins. Immovable HIV specific antibodies are used as bait for HIV specific proteins that is antigens in the human blood sample. HIV antigens bind to the antibodies and the bound HIV antigens are made visible by labeled antibodies that bind to the HIV antigen. This is the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA test. Western blood test is more reliable and confirmatory test for HIV. It detects the viral core proteins. If both tests detect the presence of the antibodies, the person is considered to be HIV positive. Here in this image, you can see how the western blot HIV test is done. First, the antigen samples are taken from the patient and the proteins are separated by the separation gel. And the blotting tank is used where the proteins are transferred to the nitrocellulose sheet on the blot. And the label antibody is introduced, causing immunostaining of the blot. The antigen in the labeled sheet combines with the primary antibody and this also combines with the secondary antibody and the enzyme substrate or the enzyme linked to the secondary antibody is done and there is detection signal which is done by fluorescence or 
chemiluminescence through autoradiography. And this is developed and fixed autoradiograph results in the formation of antigen bands, which is visualized. AIDS has no cure. Prevention of AIDS is the best option. Advocating safe sex, promoting regular checkup, safe blood for transfusion, use of disposable needles, use of condoms during sexual contact, and prevention of drug abuse. AIDS awareness program by NACO, National AIDS Control Organization. NGOs like non-governmental organizations and WHO are to prevent the spreading of AIDS. Now let us move on to the autoimmune diseases. What is an autoimmune disease? Autoimmunity is due to an abnormal immune response in which the immune system fails to properly distinguish between self and non-self antigens and attacks its own body. Our body produces antibodies called autoantibodies and cytotoxic T cells that destroy our own tissues. If a disease state results, it is referred to as autoimmune disease. Here in this image, you can see the organs of the immune system, the primary lymphoid organs like the thymus and the bone marrow, the secondary lymphoid organs like the tonsils and the adenoids, the lymph nodes, the appendix and the spleen. Now, what are the causes of autoimmune disease? Maybe hereditary, maybe because of involvement of the white blood cells, because of the lifestyle changes, or hormonal influences or environmental factors. Some of the disease examples like systemic lupus erythematosus, multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. What are the symptoms produced because of the involvement of the organs in autoimmune disease? Myocarditis, skin rashes, impaired vision, pulmonary fibrosis and joint pains and muscle pains. What are autoantibodies and autoantigens. Thus, autoimmunity is a misdirected immune response. Autoimmunity is evidenced by the presence of autoantibodies and T cells that are reactive with the host antigens. When the cells act as antigens in the same body, they are called autoantigens. What is an autoantibody? Antibody that recognizes an individual's own proteins or antigens. Example, on the right side you can see the myasthenia gravis that occurs because of the receptors being blocked by the autoantibodies and there is decrease in the function of the acetylcholine. This can cause damage to the muscles. Autoantibody can also occur which can clump with the antigens and cause damage. Example, lupus erythematosus. You can see in the image where the autoantibodies form autoantibody complexes and get deposited in the various organs, for example, the kidney and can cause kidney damage, which is unknown if autoantibodies cause damage or are a byproduct of uncontrolled inflammation, example, juvenile myositis. Autoimmune diseases in the human can be divided into two broad categories, namely organ specific and non-organ specific. Non-organ specific is a systemic disease or systemic autoimmune disease. In organ specific disease, the autoimmune process is directed mostly against one organ. The autoantibodies may block the functions performed by the organs. Example include Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves disease which affects the thyroid gland and the Addison's disease which affects the adrenal glands. In non-organ specific systemic disorders, autoimmune activity is widely spread throughout the body. Example the rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis are examples of systemic disorders. Here in this image you can see the different organs being affected by the autoimmune disorders. For example, the brain you have the multiple sclerosis, Gulenberry syndrome and autism. In thyroid, it causes thyroiditis, Hashimoto's disease and Graves disease. The bones, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, polymyalgia rheumatica. In muscles, muscular dystrophy and fibromyalgia. In the skin, psoriasis, vitiligo, eczema and scleroderma. In the lungs, fibromyalgia, vaginous granulomatosis. In the nerves, peripheral neuropathy and diabetic neuropathy. In the GI tract, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis and diabetes type 1. In the blood, it can cause leukemia, lupus erythematosus or hemolytic dysglycemia. Now let us move on to the tumor immunology. A tumor or a neoplasm is a group of cells whose growth has gone unchecked. When a tumor continues to grow and invades the healthy tissue, it is called cancer. They spread to other parts of the body from the tumor and give rise to secondary tumor. 
This is known as metastasis. Tumor may be benign or malignant depending upon its characteristics. Benign or non-cancerous tissues are capable of indefinite growth and do not invade other body parts. They are locally present. In the malignant tumor, the cells grow indefinitely, detached from the original tumor and migrate to the healthy surrounding tissues or to the distant organs. In normal cells, the cell growth and differentiation is highly controlled and regulated. But in cancer cells, there is a breakdown of this regulatory mechanism. Normal cells show a property called contact inhibition, which inhibits the uncontrolled growth. Cancer cells do not have the property of contact inhibition. As a result, cancerous cells divide continuously, giving rise to a mass of tissues called tumors. Here in this image, you can see that the normal cells will have the property of the contact inhibition and they have controlled growth. In a precancerous cells, there is slow loss of contact inhibition, hence individual cells can grow excessively. In cancer cells, there is loss of contact inhibition and the cells grow excessively and there are multiple layers formed. When a cell undergoes malignant transformation, it acquires new cell surface antigens and may also lose some normal antigens. These antigens are present in the membranes of the malignant cells and they induce an immune response. Both humoral and cellular responses may be observed in malignancy. Cancer cells can avoid immune detection as they are not foreign bodies but are abnormally functioning body cells. This makes them difficult to treat. Here you can see the immunology of cancer. Release of the cancer cell antigens occur because of the cancer cell death and the cancer antigen presentation occurs by the dendritic cells or the antigen presenting cells and the priming and activation of the cells occur by the antigen presenting cells and the T cells. The trafficking of the T cells to tumors occurs by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and the infiltration of T cells occur into the tumors by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and the endothelial cells. Recognition of the cancer cells occurs by the T cells that is the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and the cancer cells and the killing of the cancer cells occurs by the immune cells and the cancer cells themselves. The concept of immunological surveillance postulates that the primary function of the immune system is to seek and destroy malignant cells that arise by somatic mutation. The efficiency of the surveillance mechanism reduces either as a result of aging or due to congenital or acquired immunodeficiencies and leads to increased incidence of cancer. Thus, if immunological surveillance is effective, cancer should not occur. The development of tumor represents a lapse in surveillance. Here you can see the differences between the normal cell and the cancer cell. On the left side the normal cells and the right side the cancer cells. The normal cells are small, uniformly shaped nuclei, relatively large cytoplasmic volume. Whereas in cancer cells, the large variable shaped nuclei, relatively small cytoplasmic volume. The normal cells Conformity in cell size and shape. Cells are arranged into discrete tissues. Whereas cancer cells, variation in cell size and shape occurs and disorganized arrangement of cells. Normal cells may possess differentiated cell structures. Normal presentation of the cell surface markers. Whereas cancer cells, loss of normal specialized features, elevated expression of the certain cell markers. Normal cells, lower levels of dividing cells and cell tissues clearly demarcated, whereas cancer cells, large number of dividing cells, poorly defined tumor boundaries. Immunotherapy of cancer. Immunotherapy also called biological therapy uses substances made by the body or in a laboratory, example the monoclonal antibodies, to improve or to resist the immune system function. Different approaches have been attempted in the immunotherapy of cancer. Immunotherapy appears to be important in getting rid of the residual malignant cells after the gross tumor has been removed. The best results in the treatment of cancer is to follow an integrated approach to therapy, combining surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Here you can see how the immunotherapy is given. The blood cells are removed from the body and the mononuclear cells are incubated with the tumor antigens and activated. And these cells are again, which are mature dendritic cells displaying the antigens are transferred back to the recipient. 
what are the types of cancer immunotherapy that can be given in the form of vaccines, antibody drug conjugates, cytokines, oncolytic viruses, molecular targeted chemo and radiotherapy, metabolic inhibitors, molecular agonists, checkpoint inhibitors and CAR T cells. What is the scope of immunology? The younger graduates in this field can find number of employment opportunities in the government as well as the private hospitals. The scope of immunology is immunotherapy, microbial immunology, clinical immunology, cellular immunology, allergy and immunology, transitional immunology, transplantation immunology, neuroinflammatory disorders, tumor immunology, vaccine immunology, inflammatory disorders, ocular immunology and inflammation. So today in Human Health and Diseases Part 7, we discussed about the immunodeficiency diseases like AIDS and autoimmune diseases. So thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Register for UG and PG NEET type MCQs in our website www.readmedprepacademy.com Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com Our Instagram is Read Med Prep Academy. Join Read Med Prep Academy. WhatsApp the number given below. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers regarding the lecture. Thank you very much.